Let's have a look at the ECDSA signature and how we use uh, the nonce and how we could possibly derive the private key if we know the nonce value that's been used to create the signature. Okay, so initially let's look at uh, elliptic curve cryptography and also digital signatures. So with elliptic curve cryptography, we have a curve in an analog way that looks a little bit like this. So if we plotted that, uh, we have uh, an equation that looks like this. Okay, so those are the x, y coordinates. It draws that curve there. And then we make it mod of a prime number. It's also known as the order of the curve. So all the values that we get uh, are between 0 and n minus 1. The curve itself is defined by the a value, the b value, and also of this uh, large prime number. What we do with the elliptic curve is that we take a point on the uh, on the curve called g, a generator point, and then what we do is that we add g a number of times. We just keep adding, 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 uh, doubling the points and so on, until we get another point on the elliptic curve. We always get another point on the elliptic curve whenever we add uh, points. We get another cut point on the elliptic curve, uh, which will be the number of times that we've added A. So in this case, let's call it uh, our, our private key, a privilege value, and we, the way we would represent it is like this. So it's like a multiplication privileged value times G, or G added privilege times private time sorry so the private key becomes this value here and then the public key is then the x y coordinate of this privileged uh, private times uh, g okay so this becomes our public key uh, point and the private value is the number of times that we've added g or multiplied uh, g there. So that's a private key that is typically a 256 bit random value. And then, as I said, we get the XY value for uh, the public key. So when it comes to signatures, if we take uh, Alice and Bob, then uh, Alice has a private key and she also has a public key. As we saw, that's the private key, our 256-bit random value, and she has a public key, which is that private value uh, multiplied by uh, the G, or added those many times. So when she takes a message, she wants to sign it with her private key. So in the, in the ECDSA method, we create an R and an S value so we take the message and we take the private key and we create a signature with an R and an S. So when Bob receives this, he looks at the message and then he takes the R and the S value and then takes Alice's public key uh, and is able to check that Alice did sign it uh, initially. Same thing happens with a Bitcoin uh, transaction where if Alice wants to send Bob some Bitcoins then the transaction is here, and then she creates an RS and an RNS value to show that she's signed a transaction that goes to Bob. And then everyone can prove that with Alice's public key. Okay, so the way that it, that it works, uh, as we saw, and we'll take Bob as an example here, is that Bob creates his private key, 256 bit private key. Bob then generates his public key by uh, adding G private this by the number of uh, uh, the the value of the private key to get uh, private times G that becomes his public key. It then takes a message and then will generate a, a, a nonce value or a random value known as K in this place in this case. He then finds a new point on the elliptic curve called k times g. So it takes the g 
volume. So if we think about it as a G, he finds a new point K G uh, for the R volume. We only really use the uh, X coordinate of that volume and that becomes the R value on its own. So there's no two points on there. It's just a single, single 256 bit value. It then calculates the uh, S value by taking, by dividing by K or K to the minus one. So that's done with an inverse mod, inverse of K mod and where N is the order of, of the curve then takes a hash of the message and adds it to uh, R, the R value here, the x-coordinate, times his uh, uh, private key value. The signature then becomes R, uh, comma, S. But if Bob releases one of the nonce values with his signature, is it possible now <coughs> for an intruder to find out <coughs> his private key. <coughs> okay, so can we recover the private key if we know R and S and we know at least one of the key values? And it's true because uh, if we take our R and an S, then if we put that across there, that becomes SK is equal to that. Then if we move that over the other side, we end up with this and then the private key <coughs> is r to the minus one of s times k minus uh, hm everything is done with a mod of uh, our order in there too so we can see in this case if bob has released his private uh, his nonce value in generating any of the signatures then eve will be able to generate his private key from, from that. Okay, so here's some uh, code that we can look at. Okay, so I've just used the standard generator uh, for that, for our, our G uh, there, using the NIST uh, 256, P256 curve. And then this defines our order. So that's all of our value, all of our operations are done mod of this value mode of n, in this case we call the order, and then we'll generate a random private key and see if we can recover it back. From there we can generate the public key, which is obviously just uh, g times the, the privileged, and if we want we can generate back uh, the private key based on the public, uh, based on the public key. Then we'll create a random nonce value. We have a message and then hash the message uh, to uh, an, an integer uh, value. After that, we can then sign the value. So we end up with an R and an S value. So that's those values in there. And that becomes the signature for this message signed by uh, the private key, which is uh, the one that we generated here. After that, we can do r to the minus 1 using an inverse mod function and with the order. And we'll take our s value. So this value here is how we reverse back the private key. So the private key is equal to r to the minus 1 times k s minus m, which is the hash. This is the hash of the message. And we uh, will do uh, a, a mod of the order of the curve. Then hopefully we'll be able to match the key to the key that we've found and show the match there. Okay, so there's an example here. Okay, so we'll try message. Okay, so then signature, and if we try again, we should get another signature because we're using a different uh, 
nonce values in there. Okay, so here's the code here. Let me just try and run that. Uh, so this is the, the nonce value. So if we know that nonce value, then it can go in, in here. And obviously in truth, would normally not know that, but if, but if it's leaked, then it's possible to discover the key, the private key, that is associated uh, with, the, with the signer. Okay, so if you're interested in, in how EC uh, DSA actually works, uh, so as I said, uh, we generate a private key, and then from there we generate our public key, which is a private key times G. Okay, so uh, we work out this XY point, which is a newly generated uh, nonce value. From there, we have R is equal to X mod N, and then the S value is given by, by this. As we've just seen, uh, this is how we can derive the private key from there. But I'll just show you how the uh, the ECDSA method actually works when it's received and it's checked. First, we calculate this value and then this value. So this is for the receiver as we have here and here. We then calculate a point which is U1 G plus U2 and with the public key of the signer. This is the public key uh, here. If we then uh, go through that uh, for U1, we have H of M to the over, over S. Yeah. Plus uh, the U uh, gives us R privileged G. And again, it's over S, so we can just uh, create it like, like that. Okay, so if we then uh, replace our values here for the S, then we can have our privilege a private and then the top there each of them G plus R privileged G there just forgot about the G value from there and then this is obviously the same as that so we can take we can cancel that so that becomes H M plus R privileged times G upon H M plus R privilege private <laughs> K minus one. We take cancel that out and we end up with K G which should be the same as that value there. So if this is Bob's signature then Alice will check that the R value is equal to what she's calculated uh, here. Okay, so that's how ECDSA works, but you can see here we have a risk if the nonce value is, is released or known for just one of the signatures, then Eve can calculate the private key that signed it. Okay, so that's been a quick outline of ECDSA.